very specific memory chips, maybe we should go and build a generalized chip. So instead of memory, they went over here and said, we're going to build a CPU. People thought they were crazy. No one would give them money. They were shunned. I believe they were called the traitorous eight when they left to start this. You could imagine how they must have felt. They must have felt completely alone. But, again, if you ask yourself the litmus test, that's probably the good sign. And so Intel was born. Because Intel said, let's create machines that can do anything. And now Intel was starting to take off. They took that scarce resource and they built huge factories and they said, we're going to make this abundant. We're going to make hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions of CPUs. And the entire PC industry was built around it. But then what happened? Two people, the husband and wife, in Silicon Valley, in the early 1980s said, okay, well, this is great. You can now have these computers, but how do you actually make them talk to each other? Because if computers could talk to each other, now you'd have more than one computer, you'd have many computers working together. People thought they were crazy. And they tried to get funding. And ultimately, Sequoia was the only one that gave the money, and they created a company called Cisco. And then Cisco started to say, wow, we're going to build all these routers. We're going to connect all these machines together. We're going to make every computer connected. We're going to create the internet. And they made networked computing an abundant resource. It was scarce. They built a router, made it abundant. And then two people at Stanford were walking around one day, two PhDs, and they said, wait a minute. All of these machines can now talk to each other but how do you find anything on these machines? That was a very scarce resource. Maybe the document that I'm searching for is not on my computer. Maybe it's on your computer. And so they tried to raise money. And people told them that they were crazy. And they had a product that they were building as part of their PhD research at Stanford. And at one point, they went to the people at Yahoo and they said, we are willing to sell this to you for $2 million. And the good people at Yahoo said no. They said $2 million is too much money. So these two people said, okay, then we're going to build this company. Larry Page and Sergey Brin. And they built Google, now a $500 billion company. And then while Larry and Sergey were indexing the entire universe of information and making it accessible, a handful of people said, well, now that you can organize all this information, what about organizing all the people? And people thought we were crazy. And you tried to raise money. And that was also very difficult. And then eventually, one person, Peter Thiel, gave us $500,000. And that was the beginning of Facebook. And now, while Facebook has organized all the people, other companies are asking themselves, what other resources are now scarce? We don't know the answer yet. Is it Uber? Is it Didi Kwadi? I don't know. We don't know yet. 
That's why it's amazing, because we don't know the answer. But our opportunity is to figure out which one of us can find this scarce resource and build this next great company. And then while that's getting built, some of us should ask the question, what comes after that? I don't know the answer to that question either. But we can propose a rule, right? Rules are good sometimes. So we can propose a rule that talks about this relationship. And the rule is that whatever is critical at this next level is really the thing that is scarce at the current level. So when you look around your life every day, you probably see things that are very limited and very broken. Those are probably the things that have a chance to be the scarce resource that if you can build a company, can become abundant. Right? So the critical resource at the next level is the scarce resource at our current level. And so your ideas have to pass this test. Otherwise, you're probably not working on something that is important enough to be at that level. Why is this rule so important? It's because there is this very important dynamic that exists, which is that when you solve this problem, when you solve this formula correctly, it's winner take all. that these companies create huge, huge, huge amounts of value. And they capture most of the value. Multi-hundred billion dollar company. When everybody was focusing on memory, they focused on a CPU, they built abstractions, they created product leverage, they won. When everybody was focused on building PCs, they focused on building the operating system. They built elegant abstractions. They created product leverage. They won. When everybody was focused on operating systems, they decided to connect machines together. They created beautiful abstractions. They created product leverage. They won. And when everybody was trying to figure out how to make machines talk to each other, these guys decided to organize the information in the machine. They created elegant abstractions. They created product leverage. They won. So it's amazing how repetitive the strategy is. The rules are the same. The tactics are different, but the strategy and the rules have always been the same. And so if we can understand that well, now we can figure out how to do it for ourselves. And what's amazing is when you look at this chart, so much of this value is captured by these companies. Again, very much a winner-take-all dynamic. And when you do it, you can do it so profitably. So if you look at the companies at the top, these are very famous companies. IBM, General Electric, AT&T. But when you look at the companies on the bottom, what you see are the principles of abstraction and product leverage, Why? right? You see much, much fewer employees. You see a lot more revenue and you see a lot more value. So as you're thinking about the type of company that you start or the company that you are running, you need to think about building a company that looks like the bottom four, not the top three, by following these rules. 